When World of Warcraft released in 2004, it gave players a massive open world to explore. Over time, new zones, continents, and even whole new worlds have been added to the game. With leveling changes in the Cataclysm expansion, as well as the addition of Chromie Time in Shadowlands pre-patch, many parts of Azeroth and beyond have been left behind and forgotten. In this series, we're going to take a look at some of the forgotten corners of the World of Warcraft. We're going to start our adventures in the zone that I first started leveling in and has a near and dear place to my heart, and that is Tirasfall Glades. Tirasfall Glades in Classic WoW when it first released was a super aesthetic zone for the undead. It made you feel like you were one of the forsaken. The gloomy atmosphere, the dark music, the spirits uh, and skeletons everywhere. It just felt amazing. Over time though, as the game has progressed and leveling changes have occurred, more and more parts of Tears Fall Glades have been forgotten. Most people are rushing out of there and going to Chromie time these days and hitting up the Cataclysm expansion to start with Silver Pine Forest and go from there. Tears Fall Glades doesn't see much action anymore, but there are some parts of this zone that are more forgotten than others and you never see anyone go to anymore, but have a lot of really cool stuff in them. In the northern part of Tears Fall Glades, we will find Agamond Mills. Now, the mills were owned by the Agamond family, for who it is named, and it was one of the largest and most prosperous farming areas in Tears Fall. When the Scourge attacked, the Agamond family attempted to defend and protect their land. However, they were, of course, overrun and slaughtered. The family was risen by the Scourge into undeath and made to serve. When the Scourge threat was ended, the Agamons did not become part of the Forsaken. They still serve the Scourge, and Captain Dargol uses his necromancy to raise the ancestors of the family from the Agamon family crypts to use as an army against the Forsaken in the nearby capital of the Undercity. Agamon Mills brings back a lot of memories for me. I remember running around Agamon Mills, dying multiple times <laughs> to the skeletons and the various uh, undead in this area. It was a great area. I sat there and stared at the windmills for a long time. Coming back here brought back a lot of nostalgia and I just love the look of this area right here. So much fun. Moving just a little east from Agamon Mills, we have the North Coast. Now, coastal areas of zones in World of Warcraft are typically very forgotten and rarely visited anymore. There's not much purpose to them. But the one thing that all coasts just about in World of Warcraft have in common are murlocs. Murlocs everywhere. They are, the little buggers just infest almost every coast there is, and this one is no exception. The Vilefin tribe along the northern coast of Tiras Fall Glades has an extensive little village of huts, and they also even live in the shells of turtles, where you can find a particular rare here named Deeb. Deeb will sometimes be seen right here in this turtle shell. A couple of interesting things, though, on the shore of this coast is a wrecked night elven ship and this giant anchor. Now, this anchor, if you put a character next to it, you will see how big this anchor is. It is absolutely massive. What do you think that this giant anchor goes to? Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think this big old thing was attached to and how it ended up on the coast with the vile fins. The last area of Tears Fall Glades I want to travel to is the Scarlet Monastery. No, not the dungeon, the exterior area. If you don't remember, the exterior of the Scarlet Monastery does have quests associated with it and a whole area to explore around it with the Terrace of Repose. There's really not much to do there, just a few quests to kill the Scarlet Crusaders in the area before you get quests to go into the dungeon itself. But it's still kind of neat that this area was here. I remember back in the day when I first started playing World of Warcraft and I was sent to the Scarlet Monastery. I remember seeing the monastery in the distance from Brill. You could see it up on the hill, just a shadow of itself with the giant cathedral spires. And I was like, what is that up there? 
Then eventually, I got the quest to go and visit it. And as I ran up the long and winding road going up to the monastery, and it became full and clear what I was venturing into, I was absolutely awestruck by the size of this giant cathedral. It's really one of those moments that you'll never forget as a new player, seeing something like the cathedral coming up the road and seeing the spires grow out of the darkness. As a quick bonus, just south of the Scarlet Monastery and right outside of Balnir Farmstead, there is an open grave right here with a saddle, some dead flowers, and ghosts nearby. On a placard on the grave marker, it says, Invincible, beloved steed of Prince Arthas Menethil, loyal and great of heart in life, may you find peace in death. Your streams and green pastures, devoted friend. Which is a little sad and morbid considering we go and kill Arthas weekly on multiple characters just to try to get the mount to drop so we can have our own Invincible. So there you have it. Invincible's Grave. But what are some areas of Tears Fall Glades that you have fond memories of that you think people have long forgotten? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.